Good afternoon, everybody. This is the Whispering Gentleman. After receiving a few requests to do true horror stories, I've decided to do a series based off of true horror stories, lore, and urban legends. If you like these stories, please let me know in the comments below so I can continue to do more. Or if you have any true stories yourself that you would like me to narrate, then let me know. With that, let's jump on into it. The Boy With No Eyes One night, when I was ten, I was woken up by my bedroom door opening, followed by someone sitting on my bed. I felt a graze across my leg, and the bed sink under a person's weight. It's just my mom, I thought, and I opened my eyes. It was not my mom. I found an eyeless boy. He had black, empty sockets, about my age, sitting at the foot of my bed. He extended his hand, and in it was a little box. I was startled, but I reached out. He pulled back. I reached out again and said, give it. And I blinked, and when I reopened my eyes, he was gone. But I could still see the imprint where he had sat on my bed. Fast forward five years. My girlfriend came over to do homework. After she finished, she took a nap while she waited for her parents. When they arrived, I tried waking her up. She opened her eyes suddenly, looking up at a corner where the wall met the ceiling. She pointed there and went back to sleep. I shook her again. She came to full consciousness and I explained what she'd done. She looked haunted up on the wall. I saw a little boy with no eyes. He was there and a Spider-Man pose staring back at me. I freaked out. I freaked out and told her my story about the same kid. The Architect's Key There once was a man named Edward who designed and built his own perfect house. He lived in it for many years until he eventually passed away. A new family soon moved in, but whenever they went into the basement where Edward's personal study had been, they would get a feeling that someone was watching them. One day, the father of the new family decided to fix up an old jacket, which every tailor in town had told him was beyond repair. So. He went down to the old study, laid his jacket on a chair, and then tried to see if there was anything in the old desk that could help him mend it. But the drawers were all locked, and he couldn't find a key anywhere. The next morning he came back down to find the key on the desk. All of the drawers opened, and his jacket completely fixed. candle burns. Three little girls were having a sleepover one night when they decided to try to host a sentence. One of the girls, Clara, recently lost her grandpa and wanted to see if she could commune with his spirit. The three girls gathered some candles and a few items that belonged to the late grandfather. His watch, his cigar case, and a photograph of him. The girls held hands and started the sentence. Suddenly, the candles began to flicker, and the hands on the watch began to spin. Clara was sure it was her grandpa. Elated, she began to talk to him and ask him questions, when all of a sudden, one of the candles flew, as if by some invisible force, and almost hit her head. Grandpa never do that, she said, shaking. She was right. It wasn't her grandpa. And whoever it was clearly did not like being disturbed. After hours, it was nine o'clock. Time for the store to close. Valerie, Jenny, and Kelly were the only ones working. As they were cleaning up the store, 
pile of shirts fell to the floor. None of the girls touched it. It's probably the ghost, Jenny said. Very funny, said Kelly. No, really, Valerie replied. He's a little boy. He likes to play. Kelly still didn't take them seriously, though. She thought they were teasing her because she was younger. But when she went into the back room to get her keys to go home, she saw a flash of a young boy in the mirror next to her. When she looked back, her keys had been placed on the floor.